now i'll go over the transport layer for the last time then we move on to the next layers hopefully i will i will want us to finish with all the layers today then we can start our simulation okay so uh, as i was saying i was saying that the the transport layer is that layer that's responsible for for the transmission of these broken data to the nodes various nodes and workstations that's uh, uh, tapping the, the the resource from the main server okay when we talk about the session layer this layer actually helps out with task to carry information from one node to another node a session layer has to be made before we can transport information to another computer so you can see as you go to you can see some layers depend on other layers for example you cannot have a data link layer without having a transport layer or a physical layer so you can see please take note of every layer some layers depend on another layers so the session layer here it actually comes before the transport layer the transport layer actually depends on this session layer a session layer has to be created before transport layer will come and the data link layer will also set before a transmission is done from one place to another or from one node to another someone asking a question to your flow can you actually hear us it seems you are having problem with your microphone okay we have the presentation layer this all right now this layer take note of this this is very this is a whole course on its own the presentation layer kindly take note we will be also digging inside in coding and decoding where we will, we will actually see the digital and analog transmissions we will actually dig inside this but i think i would have to brighten you more here now the presentation layer this layer is responsible to code and decode data sent to the node now some data are being sent in analog form some are being sent in digital form now it depends on the type of data you are sending this thing we will dig it's a whole a whole let me say topic on its own as we progress so whenever you send a data it is being converted that is decoded now after the transmission before the 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 the, the node will get it it is actually encoded again so you see the breakages so now see the transport layer the transport layer actually says this layer allows data to be broken into smaller packages now come to the presentation layer this layer is responsible to code and decode data sent to the node why do you think when i'm sending data from my point to another it has to be break into smaller packages yes because these data are going to be transferred using electrical signals so this electrical signal will push this smaller smaller bits of data so if you are sending a one megabyte data it's going to break it into kilobytes so that it can actually push it so we push it that's called decoding it will decode the file then push it so when it gets to the node it's actually within some seconds it's actually you 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 are the you the consumer you won't see anything all you see is the file has arrived then you use it for your for for whatever it's intended for but in the processes when when it gets immediately it gets to your end all the smaller particles come together then from that whole file that was sent from the from the source so 
this presentation layer is responsible for the code and the decoding of the data that is being sent to the various nodes. All right. Any question before we move to the application layer? Any question? Okay, no question. Let's move very quick. Now the, the application layer. This layer allows you to use an application that will communicate with say the operation system of a server a good example would be using your browser to interact with operating system server blah 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 this if you don't understand don't worry let me bring it down you see in 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 let me say i don't know if any of you has worked at the bank before or being a teller or in an organization that require you to request. Now, the application you are using for requesting is termed as the application layer. So, when you go to the bank, they tell us. Now, they get your, they get some some systems. They get your 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 account number, bank account number. They do to the amount of money you are coming to withdraw. The teller send a request. Actually, send a request to the main server so sometimes you see you'll be you'll be the teller will take your detail and be like network problem please wait the teller is waiting for response from the base or the server the main boss so the application that is being used to apply that request is the application layer so it communicates with the main server at the back door the main server says okay it's true this person has like the ability to withdraw money from this account and so okay the the, the account then the amount of money here is enough for what he or she is requesting and so give it to the person then the information comes back then the teller starts counting your money for you then stamp it then you go this is what works so actually bank banking system all they use is network everything they use is based on network network next so the application they use for requesting requesting all these is called the application layer now the reason this is the main reason why banks are more vulnerable to attacks from hackers because in hacking your major target is a network so when you find the network nodes those receiving the base server where it's located, everything, the software, the version of the software you are using, the security, the firewalls, the bank is doomed. You can actually hit our attack, launch multiple attacks, get to the bank server and start and we'll see all the money in everyone's account in that bank. Then we'll just be transferring, sitting down, eating his or a popcorn, then we transferring the money to his account comfortably. So banks are actually vulnerable. So you as a network designer or a network expert, when you are designing a network for a bank or any organization, the major or the main point you have to consider is the security of that network. How someone can't tap in your transport layer and divert the data being transported to his or her side does this is where the firewalls will come inside and the various security configurations will come inside we will actually get to all those by the end of the program you should be able to design in fact a network that is more let me say durable and let me say it can actually restrict any attack from any hacker you can't you can't just go to organization they will employ you to design a network for them you will design any network then they start being attacked by hackers and eventually they will go bankruptcy you know you you you'll be held accountable so please take if you want to actually follow this career know what you are doing and understand it and apply security to it because networks are the major target 
of Hakis. All right, any questions so far? Okay, tell us. Yes, I'm listening. So this, uh, does it mean that all the layers are essential importance? Or as you said, the uh, application, the presentation, are they more important or they are all on the same page? Okay, all layers are important all layers because without the absence of one layer your network your 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 network design is not complete you can't actually execute it so they are all important you need all in your designing you get it they are all of equal importance so as a network designer or as someone who is expert in building networks you need to know all your layers, understand them, you need to know. And every layer has its, or has its softwares you can use, multiple things you can use, a whole lot you can use. So you would have to dive into each layer and know what is required in each layer so that you know you are, if you are building a, a network and selling it to a company, you know, okay, this, my network, it's, 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 it's very, let me say, I have very confident in it that it will work and suit the, 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 the company in whichever way it wants it. As, as you, as, a, as a, network, a networking student, you should be able to be building these basic, busy networks, starting from your homes, connecting your printer, sharing files, you should be practicing. So that and be building your major networks and be piloting them. I'll share these softwares for you then you start practicing actually at the hackathon i would like one to demonstrate one or two people to demonstrate a very innovative network yes you have the potential of winning an award a very innovative network whereby maybe someone might be interested in buy or you can sell to a company the company will come and buy your network all right so okay, the, sir. all right the 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 what you are seeing is a diagram of a local area network this is someone's network that a person has built actually let me explain this network to you so the person has actually named the various nodes or workstations as department so this is department one department one department two department three so they are they are the clients they are the client and he or she has connected this client to a major line note every network has an ip address you will learn about the protocols so that you you understand them but for here these are the various addresses to to we will learn about how to address the addressing as a network as well you should know how to address the address in the 22.22.59.01 so you see 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.03 0 0.04 0 0.05 0 0.06 0 0.07 0 0.08 0 0.09 every 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 workstation or every node should have a unique ip address that is connect so you see this ip address you know, of the network this is what the hacker wants take note so if this becomes vulnerable this becomes revealed to the hacker you are doomed the hacker can penetrate this your major line and whatever resource being shared here can be diverted to the hacker maybe computer one is sending an amount of one million Ghana. the hacker is tapped here is tapped here right where my mouse is so it's coming from this computer this department one it will get here then the hacker has created a channel here so you get here then it pass here goes to the hacker straight or hacker to a department two is also sending an amount it's immediately it enters this the hacker knows the ip address of this whole ethernet this main line the ip address is 222.22.0.2 two, 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 the hacker knows it and the hacker has tapped it 
So whatever amount that will pass through this channel, either department one, department two, department three, is going to tap them all and connect them in a different channel, then they will pass through this server. That's the main server is here. So the person building this uh, network system used the, so this is a main line. Let me break it down for you. All right, watch very carefully. This department one is a node server. So let's say it's a bank. It's a bank. This is teller one, teller two, teller three. And each of the tellers, they have their unique IP addresses. Okay. They are all connected to a main line. This is the main line. This main line is named, the person has named it Ethernet. Then the IP address of the Ethernet is to, to note, in our first meeting, I made mention of host. And I said, every host has a unique address. So these are the addresses. These are the address. And, and I made mention of, you see, you connect a blue, uh, a hotspot. You, you power on your hotspot, either using your MiFi or your phone for your laptops. Then you see on your phone, it will say three devices are connected, four devices. I told you the number that has been connected saying four devices. It's not necessarily saying it's because of the device that's connected. No, it's because of the different IP addresses that has connected. That's why it is counting. So it means four different IP addresses have connected. If two of your devices have one IP address, it will be counted as one. So in networking, we don't deal with devices or we deal with IP addresses. So there are this IP address. Is, yes. Please, uh, in what case do two devices have the same IP address? I that one I doubt. I'm not seen some before. I doubt. I don't know if some is there though, but uh if they if I don't know any circumstance though, but if should there be a case. Maybe the, those those who build systems, they can also intentionally build one, then give the same IP address for two devices, just for testing purposes. Do you understand it? Yes. Right. Okay, let's move on. So each of these has a unique IP addresses and it is identified uniquely. So this, the person, the designer of this network has actually connected three computers and named it department, department one, two, and three. Each of them is having a different IP address. Then he is having a main line, let me say a fiber cable, whereby everyone is transmitting through this single fiber cable. Okay, now this department one, wants to assess something from this server. It can assess it through this fiber cable. So it means this server will come here. Department one will just pick from this channel. Department two want to assess something, it will pick from this channel. Department three wants to pick. Department one wants to print, look, it doesn't, if you see this, don't, let me, let me be very clear so that you don't get confused here. You see, <laughs> For department two and department three, you see the lines there. It seems it's one line between the department two and the department server. No, it's not one line. Please, it's a different line between department three and the, and the printers. Here is a printer. It doesn't mean department three is connected to the printer, please. It doesn't mean department two is connected to the department server, no. And it doesn't mean department one is connected to this router. No, this is how it's working. Department one and its cable, department two and its cable, department three and its cable. Now, all these three cables are connected to a mainstream cable. This one here, this bigger one here, Ethernet. The person has named it Ethernet. Okay. Now, according to his design, this router, its cable is also connected to this major one. This department server is also connected to this major one and this printer is also connected to this major one, meaning all resources are found in this major network or this major fiber that's 22.22.0.2. It means 
when department one wants to print something, it will just issue a command and this printer will print it. When department one wants to fetch a file from this server, it will just come then fetch the file. When department one wants to access something from the router or want to share something here, it will just come to this mainstream then share it. It's not meaning that department one is connected to the router only. No, this is the source of everything. This is where all the resources are meeting. So department three can access the router. Department three can access the server, the department server, and the same department three can print. Please take note of it. You will be designing your network. Take note of this. Take a critical. I'll go over again. Okay. Let's go over. Now, this is a design of someone, someone's network that the person is going to sell to a company. Now, there are three departments in that organization. Let me say human resource, IT department, and let me say sales. Now, these are the resources the department, the, the whole organization has. The organization has a, a router, that's a fireway. The department, the, the organization has a, a server, departmental server. It has one printer. Okay. Now, these three departments are going to use these, these resources whenever they need any of them. Now, from out of the intelligence of this designer, this designer made in such a way, all these computers, all these nodes, all these departments can actually fetch a resource whenever it needs it. So it is not necessarily connecting to a one particular resource, no. He has connected this tray to a major stream here called Ethernet. And the, and the number, the IP is 22.22.0.2. So this is a major source of all the resources. So if someone wants to steal something from this particular network design, the person will target this one, the Ethernet. Because when a person gets here, he can assess anything from the department one, can assess anything from department two, can assess anything from department three, can also assess anything from the printer, can assess something from the server, and can assess something from the router. So this is the person's major stream. Meaning department one can issue a command here, router. The same department one can fetch a resource or a file or a store a file or retrieve a file from this server. The same department can also print something using this printer. As well as this or this these two can also do the same thing. Meaning these whole resources are connected to a mainstream whereby they are interchanging with themselves. So whoever needs something will just cross cross and pick it. If someone needs this, we'll just come here and pick. If this one needs it, we'll just come here. This one needs it, we'll just come here and pick. In the question. Sure, sir. Yes, I'm listening. Uh, so when, when I say, uh, assume a hacker wants to invade the, this system, why, why won't the target be the main, the main, uh, the main server uh, rather than the department? Since the server contains everything that the other department or the nodes out extracting or getting information from. So why okay. won't it be the main, the main one rather than other departments? Okay. Now, see something here the the you see the security or the network the the person who built this particular network might be intelligent enough that intelligent enough that he or she is protecting the server with a lot of firewall he or she is protecting this router with a lot of firewall and the, this printer so if you are a hacker Hackers are very intelligent. They won't come for a particular one, no. 
they will tap in the mainstream because here is where the meets are when you tap you can get at least if you don't get a you get b a hacker will not come directly to this server no a hacker will come here maybe this server is even waiting for a transferred one million us dollars from this department coming so the hacker will just be hanging out here everything is going to pass through this channel we will just catch it and the hacker here can also assess the server as long as the hacker is in this main fiber you can assess any resource please is someone talking okay so the hacker won't go for this and won't go for this department no the hacker will come directly this is where the meat is this is where everything is so the, when the hacker taps here if he doesn't get department a he will get definitely get department b or department c or you he can through this channel he can enter the server so if the hacker launches an attack and goes straight to the server that hacker is meaning maybe he or she there is something launch an attack straight to the server maybe he has found a very loophole a very deep loophole with this server but any hacker will just launch to this fiber and when you are into this fiber it means you control the whole network uh, structure if you are if you get inside this or if you get the protocol the, this protocol 22.22.0.2 if you get it it means the whole network is in your hand you can do whatever you want with the whole network any question our time we have four minutes to end any question questions time please any question sir please my question does not matter plus from there it's, it's regards to the area one you presented which is on networking i was quite late before before the session okay. starts can you begin on the on the top okay when i get there let me know which one is it here peer to peer or the layers this on network network itself network 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 what is it network okay here is it here no please not here the main the main uh -huh. uh, no which one the types of networks or yes the types of network No, the network is the definition to network. The I can't get it well. The the come again. Is it the peer-to-peer -peer one and the server-based categories? Come again. No, please. The definition to networking itself. The definition to networking it's okay, okay, okay. So okay. A network is any connection of independent computers that communicate with one another over a shared network. Okay. And here it's saying a network, computer network is a connection of two or more connected computers. All right. So uh, let me go over the explanation again. When we talk about a computer network, definitely it should include, include computers. When we talk about a network is very broad so that's why when i was speaking i said if someone wants you to design a network for him or her or an organization as a network expert ask which network is the person talking about is it a bluetooth or a printer this printer networks or computer network or this telecommunication network, you, you should actually ask for detail. Don't just go and assume it's computers and go and connect the computers. No. As, a, as an expert, you need to know, you need to know what you are going to use in order not to waste resources. You will be done and you'll be told, oh, I thought you knew better. 
you should have asked no get your tense well and okay so a network is actually um let me say creating a channel basically to what take what i'm giving you basically a network is creating a channel between two medium so that they can share a resource or a file or a data very fast among themselves network basically is is is, is the act or the process of creating a channel you creating a channel between two medium or two media so that a file or a resource can be shared between them and when when it's specified that a computer network this is where computers come inside a collection of two or more connected computers that can share a resource or a file through a particular channel do you get it now very simple don't let it confuse you it's very simple do you get it now yeah okay thank you very much you're welcome any question before we end the class now when i end the class i'll send this video this um recorded sessions to you to to go through then i'll be sending you links to download these softwares i'll be during the week i'll be also searching finding a way for those who use these forms to also get themselves in our next meeting we are going to do practice we are going to design networks as a networking networking student you should be able to design network and we will learn how to calculate ip addresses there is also calculation part with it you will know how to calculate this ip address as a network expert it's not difficult please it's not giddy giddy mass it's a very simple mass so those who are scared of mass don't be afraid it's very simple mass you need to do to to be able to create your own network to create your own unique IP ad note, your, your IP address, if it becomes vulnerable, your whole network structure or your whole network design is useless because the hackers will actually disturb you. Any question before we end the class? Right, if there are no questions, thank you very much for joining this class. I wish you the best and read more in the resource I've sent it to you. There are more inside. Please do well to read over them to get your base. Hello, sir. Yes, who is talking? Sir, please. Yeah. Godwin, you may okay. mention that you you have sent um how do you call this document or something into uh, Slack. Yes, I'd like to know where actually where actually can we find it because me, I'm not I, I never knew because all I know is the chat, chat, chat aspects. Just okay. go to Zoom meeting and then. But where actually is the documents located so that we can send okay, it? Okay, I, I will send it again. Right from me, I'll send it again so that you get it, right? As in, in the chat? Yes, in the chat, the Slack chat. Okay, okay. Thank you. So what about those that are not on the Slack channel? Yes, I'm, I'm with you on your WhatsApp platform. I'll join your WhatsApp platform. I'll put it in the not Slack. Are you in the not Slack group? Yeah. Yes, I'll put it there. After right after this class, I'll drop it there for you to also use it. Right? Okay. okay. If there are no questions. Okay, so then thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. So we we'll said so then please kindly send the videos right now for us, eh? please. All right. All right. All right. Don't worry. You get it right. right. Thank you. Welcome. So...